President Mohamed Buhari signs an executive order giving financial autonomy to state legislature and judiciary. And social political groups, Ohaneze, Indigbo, and the Afenifere, called on the federal government to take advantage of COVID-19 pandemic to restructure the country. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. President Mohamed Buhari has signed an executive order for the implementation of financial autonomy for the state legislature and judiciary. Going by this development, in the event of failure of any state government to release allocations meant for its state legislature or judiciary, the Accountant General of the Federation will have the power to deduct the money from the allocations due to such states in the Federation account and pay the funds directly to such state legislatures and judiciaries. And joining us to discuss this is Dr. Dio Kayode, a political technocrat, and also Adewale Ademola, a political analyst via Skype, and Dr. Hassan, a legal practitioner, also via Skype. Thank you, Dr. Dio, for joining us on the show. It's my pleasure being here, Benny Ak. All right, while we try to, while we await the joining of our Skype guests, let's get to the show already tonight. Now, is the signing of this executive order by President Mahmoud Bari a step in the right direction? 100% step towards a right direction. In actual fact, I will even want to congratulate the president to have done that. He has done, he has done what those in the past have not been able to do. If you look at our constitution, that's what we call separation of power. The executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. When there is separation of power, separation of power has to be total for each of them to be able to perform accordingly. For each of them to be able to perform the duties and functions which the constitution has as, as, as endowed upon them. But imagine where there is no freedom in terms of finance. What do you expect? It's a kind of encumbrance to performance. An encumbrance to performance because he who, he who pays the piper dictates the tune. If you are the one blowing a particular trumpet now, you can't be blowing a trumpet and you'll be expecting me to dictate the tune to you. It's not possible. You are you the one that is blowing the trumpet is, is the one that is going to dictate the tune. So, to a very large extent, in the past, in the past, there hasn't been a kind of financial autonomy to the legislature and the judiciary. And that, is why, and that is why you can see at any point in time that the governors, the executive, they are having a kind of hold on, on the legislature and the judiciary. But in his wisdom now, he said, no, let us move our democracy forward by giving both the legislature and the judiciary what we call financial autonomy. And he assigned this one into executive order. Right. To that extent, I give a great kudos to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the person of President Muhammadu Buhari. And joining us live via phone is Honorable Ladakbo Karunwi, a former majority leader at the State House for Assembly. Thank you, Honorable, for joining us on the show. A quick correction. I was the former, former deputy speaker. Former deputy speaker. Sorry about that. Thank you for joining us, former deputy speaker. And how are you doing tonight? It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. 
Now, going by the provision of the new executive order, the Accountant General of the Federation will have the power to deduct from source the allocations for both the state judiciary and legislature. Many people have argued that this could give room for corruption. Do you agree with this? Well, 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 well let, 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 let me say straight away. Let me say straight away that it is a welcome development. Any arrangement, particularly the constitutional amendment, to the effect that financial autonomy is granted the legislature and the judiciary as a separate arm of government. Because without the financial autonomy, these various arms of government are being modeled by the security. They couldn't guarantee their independence as said by the constitution. So we give kudos to the National Assembly and the Chief Judge Houses of Assembly that had in their wisdom assented to the amendment. And we appreciate the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that has assented to the amendment of the Constitution. And I appreciate him too, like other Nigerians, that he has been taking steps to ensure that the, the, the full operational uh, effect is put to that aspect of the Constitution. However, there is no way, I am not of the view, that Accountant General of the Federation has any power by whatever means. Either the executive order signed by President Mohamed Bouhari, either the FDA or the to deduct from us, we are running a federation. This is the Federal Republic of Nigeria and it is not a military system. I'm too sure that the government would challenge that power in court. Because we really don't have to. Why we are saying that we want power devolution from the federal to the federated union to reflect the true federal structure that we care for? We cannot be saying that on the one hand and be encouraging a situation whereby the president has a power to direct the agencies of the federal government to tamper with the allocation of the sub national government. No, that is that is anti federal character, that is anti federalism. So, definitely, it's not going to work. So, what I'm trying to put across in message is that I am opposed to a situation whereby the governors will not honor and respect the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The governors have no basis not to have granted financial autonomy as enshrined in the constitution of 1999 as if the governments, in their wisdom, not to have honored that, they are acting contrary to their vote of office and breach of the control of the Republic of Nigeria, they have one to oppose. However, too, the president, too, to a executive order or whatever it is, does not have to oh, direct. Uh, uh, Honorable Ladako, just hold your thoughts the there, Honorable Ladako. I'm going to come back to you in a bit, Honorable no. Ladako. Please hold your thoughts right there. Now, many people argue the fact that with with the Accountant General having such power to release funds to um, the state's legislation, judiciary, that there, this gives room for, for corruption. And I need your quick reaction to that. The issue, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know where the corruption will be coming from. In the first instance, when these monies have been distributed in the first, before now, among the three tiers of government, mm -hmm. the federal, the state, and the local government. Who normally gives that money? Who disburses? Do you understand? What, what, what are the functions of the Accountant General of the Federation? Do you understand? So if the Accountant General had been the one disbursing the monies before now to the executive, the legislature, and the local government, so why, why will the, the uh, accountant general's office still not be able to disburse money to uh, uh, states, uh, state houses of assembly and, uh, and the judiciary. I don't know where, where corruption is going to come from there. Because whatever you are disbursing, there are records for it. So people will sign for it. 
If you are disbursing, if you are disbursing 20 million to me, if you are supposed to disburse 20 million naira to me, and you are disbursing less, and you ask me to sign, I wouldn't sign it. Still with us on phone is Honorable Ladakbo Kaurumi, a former Deputy Speaker at the State House of Assembly, and I have with me a political technocrat, Dr. Kyle Dale. Thank you for staying with us, Dr. Dio. Now, Honorable, let me come to you, Honorable Ladakbo. Some people have said that already the federal legislature and judiciary are enjoying financial autonomy in line with constitutional provisions which have made it possible for them to receive the allocations from source and this should suffice in the place of the executive order. Do you agree? That some states some state, some state have been enjoying financial autonomy. Are you saying that? Hello, can you hear me? That some states have been enjoying financial autonomy. The judiciary that already, that, that, some, that? that some people are saying that already Already as it exists, the federal legislature and judiciary are already enjoying financial autonomy in line with constitutional provisions which have made it possible for them to receive the allocations from the source. And that this should suffice in the place of the executive order that President Mamadou just passed. Do you agree with that? No, 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 no. If, if the government had been living up to, to, this, to this aspect of the constitution, there wouldn't have been need for the president to issue a public order. You know, the president didn't wake up one day and just issue a public order. The president, remember, the president has put in place a committee that comprises representatives of the governor, the chairman of the Nigeria Speakers Forum, and many other stakeholders. So they have information and statistics to the effect that the state legislature has not been enjoying financial autonomy. So that was what necessitated to the new innovative idea that the president thought if a public order is issued, that will in a way compare in the implementation of that. So it has not been what was in operation before was the government will be releasing money to the legislature based on the need assessment. Not that the amount standing to their credit on the budget of the state will be prorata over nine months and be given to them directly as a first time. It doesn't happen. Okay. All right. I'll just, just hold it right there. Now, Dr. Dr. Cowdery, why do you think some governors are kicking it against this autonomous? Uh, move. I mean, what could, what could be their reason behind this? <clears throat> yeah, I, I will come to it. But you see, the, the other question you ask, uh, yes. Honorable Karoui, now, yes, it has been in the Constitution yes. before now. But it's so unfortunate that the legislature, being to G's to the governor, has not been able, in their own capacity as legislators of houses of assembly, to, to, to bring up that's, that issue, that look, this is this, all right? Because if you, look, if you go to most of these houses of uh, assembly, assembly, you're going to find out that it's the governor that always say, okay, you go there. And then you now hear, hear, hear them say, Baba Sokwe? Who is the Baba that is Sokwe? No. Let everybody go there at their own merit. And then let them have the autonomy as being dictated by the constitution. Now back to your question. The issue is this. The governors, they always want to be in charge. They always want to be in control. And they know that they can, they, if, if they are the one in charge of the finances of the houses of assembly, they will be able to stifle whoever is not dancing to their caprices. Whoever is not dancing to the tune they are dictating. All right? To that extent, to that extent, now that the president has wielded his own executive power to say, yes, we have to come up with the dictates of the Constitution now. You guys, you got to have your financial autonomy. But they are now kicking because they know that, yes, okay, I don't know whether, I don't know whether you, 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 you are able to read what happened yesterday in uh, the nation. You will see that 
That's what we call conference of Nigeria uh, as speakers. They met, they met, and they agreed to support the president as regards his autonomy. There, there, was, there was an ad advertoria in which all of them signed in, in yesterday's uh, denation. Right, so the issue is, yeah. the issue is, in as much as the state governors are looking for devolution of power from the federal, so within the state, there should also be devolution of power. That's what we call separation of power. All right. Let me, let me go back to Honorable Oladakpo. Honorable Oladakpo, the aggrieved governors see the signing of the executive order as a breach of ongoing talks between them and the presidency on how to go about the autonomy. Don't you think they're right about this, saying that there was already a deliberation ongoing between these governors and the presidency? Yes, so that, yes, they are very correct. And I told their line, I was, I was honest with you. Because the truth about it is that when the president, the committee set up to represent the president and the Nigerian government forum are dialoguing on ways to implement, there shouldn't be any hate in issuing a executive order. Because when you do a executive order and they go to the court, of course, they, they, there will be delay in the implementation. When they were in the issue of the water, that thing is put to test the court. Nobody will go ahead and implement it. So I still believe the political approach, which the governor had seen by telling us that they were meeting and their meeting is almost completed or not, is still the best option. It's still the best option. Honorable Lalakwa, are you still there? Can you hear me? Oliver Lalakwa, are you there? I'm there. Oh, and now recall, if you remember, if you can recall that, it was also reported that two groups had established a committee to work out modalities for this autonomy just before the COVID-19 crisis. Now, the presidency had, through the late chief of staff, Malam Abakiari, engaged the governors on the autonomy models for the next constitution review. Now, the negotiation had not been concluded before Kiari died. Do you think there is a rush here with this passing of the order? Quickly, please. What? That was what I just said. That was what I just said. That the, the president ought to allow the system to run through. Their meeting is to allow the meeting to run through. Because the executive order the president just issued will just delay things. The government will go to court. Then the executive order will no longer be able to move. Or the president will tell us that he will not respect the court of Nigeria. No, he will have to. The moment the government approaches the court, and the president doesn't have any executive order to direct the international to turn their money. Do you know how much can be paid? The case might be in court for the next five, six years. And the second one thing will be The governor will be mustering the legislature and they will not receive the money. But we still want to hold that the best way is for the president to withdraw the executive order and allow the process started by Abakari with the international governance forum to run its course. Okay, all right, that, doc, 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 Dr. Kaude, you want to react to... I, I, I want to disagree with the... Honorable Oladakbo. Honorable Oladakbo Karun with there. The issue is this. There's what we call separation of powers. I'm not a party man. We are not talking, we are not talking about party politics now. We are talking about constitutional provisions. One, one modality is uh, the governor's are the governors trying to come up with? When it comes to fiscal allocation, there's a committee that handles fiscal allocation. All right? Fiscal allocation is how much money we are going to share this month. And then the sharing formula. And in that sharing formula, they've already taken good care of all other variables within the states. Yes, but they, they, they were still meant to come up with modalities of what how I'm saying is, it was going to happen. I listen, mean, in the stance of the president and the late when, when you're chief of, of staff, When you're talking of modalities for what? What I'm saying is already, that's what we call percentage sharing formula. It's already there. 
This is how much is up, that is supposed to go to the House of Assembly. But again, remember, in the it was still States. meant to be a review of also the Constitution. So probably, I mean, there, there, some, some adjustments had to be made. made you are, you are taking me. that discussion to another level now, as regards constitutional right. amendments. Let me, let me, let me, let me yeah, go, let me go to... Yeah, I'll come to you in a bit. I'll, I'll never Finally to you now. It, it is reported that some of the governors may go to court to contest the constitutionality and legality of the executive order. How do you think this will pan out? Let me tell you one thing. Dr. Kaude doesn't have to agree with me. I am talking as somebody who has operated the House of Assembly of the State as Deputy Speaker between 1999 and 2003 for four years. And legislative advisor to the government of parliamentary matter for eight years. So I am not talking theory here. I'm being practical. So I don't ask anybody to ask me. I am saying this, let Nigeria listen to me and mark my words. If the president doesn't allow the meeting between the committee on the implementation set up by the president and the governor to work out modality that will make that session of the constitution implementable. The gov the president will lose the battle because nobody will stop the governor from approaching the court. Because the president, I'm not a lawyer, but I know this. How can the president be dictating how the financing that is meant for subnational or separate units? How it should be spent is will never happen in this country. The governor will go to court and the moment they start. That is the second order before the court. Every action must change until that issue is determined by a competent court of religion. Do right. you know Honorable how Lalako. long that will take? Honorable the government will be enjoying the status quo. The House of Assembly will suffer. And the court will be the case will be the court until the God knows when. So I'm a practical person. Mark my word. If the president does not withdraw that is good for that and call the governor to work out a military solution, I can bet you do my name is right on the border. That order will not work. For the next few years, nothing will happen on it. Uh, former Deputy Speaker, I can say State House of Assembly, Honorable Carol Wee Oladapo, thank you for joining us on Plus Politics and for your interesting contribution. It's a pleasure being with you guys. Now, no, now, Dr. Kaude, yeah, you're, you, you're going to react to that quickly, but yeah. I want to add one more question, so yeah. we'll wrap this segment up now. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some governors, especially those of the opposition, have also claimed that the, the president is using the executive order to gag them. Do you agree with that? In all, in all honesty, I, I, have not, I have not seen any gagging up here, all right? Because the president is the chief executive officer of this country. Is, is the custodian of our constitution, which is to be interpreted by the judiciary. And they are now said they are going to, the, to, to court, which you, which you were asking uh, Honorable oh, Ladako just now, that they are going to court. But I can assure you, it is a dead case on arrival. Doctor, are Dario, you with me? Because we, these things are entrenched in the constitution, yeah. my friend. We, we need to wrap up the segment now. Thank you very much, political technocrat, Doctor Dario Kaude. You're still with us for the next. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, the cause for restructuring is back. Stay with us.